What made you want to get into building seeds? 94, I'm not sure I wanted to. Uh, 94, which my dad bought this seat 1971 from Mark Donahue at the Hartford Civic Center car show. Mark was the Trans Am champion. Oh, yeah. I've had, heard his, the name. had his Camaro on the Sunoco display. Cars yep. And drove Z- for Roger Penske. Yep. yep. So my dad was at the track. We're looking at it. Mark was there signing autographs. And my dad looked. He goes, Wow, that seat looks comfortable. So he said, Go ahead, climb in it. So he sat in it and he goes, Wow. He's like, I need this. And Mark says, well, I built it for myself. I'll sell you one. So, he, which the, it was a lot longer. So my dad bought one. Mark gave it to him. Or sold it to him and he went to put it in the modified and it had a big headrest and it, it damn near went all the way down to your knees so it was a long seat well modifies little short things so he's, he just cut it okay boop cut the front off okay cut the top off okay fits in now okay nice seat so he says that's what i use when i started driving and then when your dad started driving oh well, no when i started because well, he, started, he, cause he okay. started he started that using it in 72 okay and he won like five championships in a row mm-hmm. uh so then uh when i started they, use that seat okay well three years later you win some guys are like, hey come drive my car okay and you jump in the seat and it's a rib held in and instead of your shoulders and you're like what the heck you go in the corner and your upper body's falling out Mm-hmm. But 94 NASCAR come to me and said, hey, no more fiberglass seats. Next year, we're not going to allow fiberglass. I said, okay, even though I had a frame around it, you know, I had to build a frame around it, you know, because uh, I would bend them oh, and I would break they, them. Wait, they weren't made out of aluminum? Uh, no, 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 they were all fiberglass. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so my dad made them out of fiberglass. I had a guy in fiberglass shop make the molds oh, and make okay. them out of fiberglass. Well, a lot of guys use that style seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... They said, no more fiberglass. I said, can I do carbon fiber? They're like, no, that's not going to be ever allowed. Okay. Uh, how do I make a flat sheet of aluminum round? You have to stamp it. Okay. Uh, went to Butler's and Brian wasn't nice. And he said, oh, that, that seat it was a piece of crap. And I, and I said, no, it's not. I mean, Mark Donnie, you invented this thing, you know, 25 years ago. And I've sat in it, and I've run in your seats, and this is a lot nicer than your seats. Now, I'll build you a custom seat. And I was like, I'm, no, see you later. So, okay, walked out of his place. Steve Richardson was a neighbor. He goes, oh, let's try it. So he, we took us a month to get one, and to, we worked there at night on it, a couple hours a night. And it used it, and it wasn't that comfortable. I said, oh, boy, we got a lot of work to do. He's like, I'm, I'm done. He's like, I helped you enough. I said, okay. Uh, now what? Well, I happened to be at my buddy's house putting a floor in his 55 Chevy. Corey was playing with his daughter. They're probably 12, 13 years old. Uh, so they're in the backyard playing. I'm helping him put a trunk in his 55. Neighbor comes over and he goes, hey, you're that seat guy, ain't you? You're the driver? I said, yeah. He goes, you had a seat at Carpenter's. I said, yeah, I just dropped it off there the other day. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I want to see if they could stamp it. And he said, what did he say? I said, he told me that it was going to be expensive and that they really didn't want to do it. I said, okay. He goes, why? He said, I have a buddy in Ohio. He goes, that uses that kind of seat. He puts got a portion. I said, really? He says, yeah. He goes, let me call him up. So he called the guy up. Well, him and his buddies just did the Richard Petty driving experience three days earlier. They were black and blue because they had the old style rib supported seats. Okay, and they're all black and blue. Still, they all had a great time. We're doing flat black or the flat back. Still had yeah. the high back. Too, yeah, right? high okay. back. Yeah, with no right. shoulders. But so. just around the ribs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. usually those those school cars are a little big, and so you're flopping around going 130 mile an hour. Well, we ran those in the midgets too. When yeah, I drove correct. for my old man, that's what could possibly go wrong. All I had. Yeah, <laughs> I started. Yeah, driving for my dad it, it, in '97. Yeah, you caught more damn air than their airline pilot <laughs> <laughs> you know it's so funny too because i look back at those photos of driving for my old man like no head and neck restraints oh, no. no shoulder support no i had a helmet strap a helmet around strap your arm around my yeah, yeah that was your arm. that was your your headrest went under my armpits <laughs> now was was that one of the the things that kind of brought you to making the high backs uh the the headrests on the sides of the now, seats well and, gm gm uh and tom gideon from gm and then he worked for NASCAR and then he retired. And Dr. John Melvin, they came in to me 
uh, right there when I built my first seats, 94. I just built my aluminum ones. I met a guy that could do stamping. So finally I met the guy through the, the guy from Carpenters and he goes, I can do this. I can stamp those for you. In Ohio. Yeah. Okay. And, and he sent me the fixtures to hold the pieces together. I mean, he's been a wonderful partner for 25 years. Uh, okay. So still with the same guy. Still, still with the same guy. That's great. And he's he's not a, he's not. We're both a whole lot older we were than we started twenty five years ago. Uh, never thought we were gonna make it this far, but at the end of the day, he, he's the reason I'm here, uh, and we saved a lot of lives in the industry. But uh, we're gonna probably do something here coming up. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably find a local stamping company. Because uh, the relationship he's had, he's his wife is sick. He's mid seventies, uh -huh. uh, but their his parents have a great bloodline. His parents are uh -huh. ninety eight and ninety nine, and they're both healthy as all get out. So that's a good thing. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm not sure how much he wants to work. Well, you start first started building seats for you for you to feel comfortable in a car. Yeah. When did the idea of all right now we're going to become a seat building company like Kirky or Butler Built or any of the ones out there? Well, I mean, once I the investment, uh, you're talking it was it was. I look at it today as like okay, you know, the seat company. I'm making payments on a three hundred thousand dollar investment. I'm still making payments. You know, uh, it it has. But then again, I had a crooked account when that went to jail. So mm -hmm. he didn't do me no darn favors. Right. Uh, so the company got itself out of a hole. We could have shut down, but we didn't. Uh, and, and I'm not on the road as much as I used to, but because when I started this, 10% of the market, maybe under 10%, was contained. That had, this is 04, 05. This is after Earnhardt, four or five years. I mean, we all know why he died. He, he didn't have a head and neck on. He didn't have a good seat. The belts weren't mounted right. And it was a, a five-point disaster that, that, you know, we lost four guys before him, same issues. But once we lost him, they paid attention. They said, okay, we're not going to let this happen again. Mm -hmm. Knock on wood, they haven't. Uh, so the systems in these cars have gotten so much better. But it's still, I mean, here, 2022, and, you know, there's rated seats out there. I think the only racetracks in the country that mandate ra rated seats is, is shutting down is I-80, the Kaczynski family. They've been doing it the last five years. As you want to race here, you have to have a good seat. You right. have to have a head and neck restraint. Or you don't race here. And he says the two or three people that, that didn't come back, he says, I helped them out and buying their stuff for them. Okay. You know, I mean, a lot of racetracks have to step up and say, hey, guys, you know, I, I try to explain to them racing is like playing Russian roulette. If you have all the bullets, that means you have a seat that's 15 years old, no containment, no head and neck. That, that's, that's, your, your chambers are full. Yeah, right, yeah, your chambers are full. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have a, a good containment seat, take a bullet out. You have a head and neck restraint, take a bullet out. You have the belt placements, take a bullet out. Right. So, what you're doing is lowering your you, probability yes, it's of always getting gonna be, hurt. It's always going to be dangerous. That's why yeah. you wear a helmet. Right. Uh, so just take the bullets out. I'll play Russian roulette with no bullets. 